All right, YouTube. I want to show you some of my favorite knives today. You know, I've always collected Barlow pocket knives. I don't know why. It's just something that caught my eye when I was a kid, and I thought, well, I got to have a Barlow. But I probably got 200 or so of them. These are just a few I decided to dig out today to show you. Just some old vintage Barlows. Now, a lot of people think that the Barlow was was invented in the United States, but it wasn't. In 1670, there was a man named Obedia Barlow, and he lived at Sherfield, England. Sheffield, whatever how you say that. And he is the one that started the Barlow Company. But in 1785, there was a man named John Russell. And John Russell started making the Barlow here in the U.S. In 1834, he built the factory called Green River Works, built it in Massachusetts, and to trademark his knives, he put a capital R and ran an arrow through it. Well, I'm gonna show you some of my old Barlows today. This one right here, I love this old knife right here. It's an old 1970 case, 10 dot, two blade. It's a razor knife. Blade was designed on these. If you needed to shave your face, you could shave your face. If you needed to shave the hair off the animals when you killed them, right there was your blade to do it with. You had other blade, just a pin blade, just like the rest of them. But you know, I always loved this old knife. I thought it was kind of unique. You don't see a whole lot of older knives with a razor blade on them. I packed this thing for a while and I thought well I'm going to end up losing it or breaking it or, or something's going to happen to it so I just decided to put it up so I keep it behind glass now and it's, it's not nothing pretty to look at it's an old used knife it's wore pretty bad been sharpened several times which you can tell by the way the blade's shaped on it she's been sharpened a bunch of times but you know I love an old knife I'd rather have this old war out knife as to have one of the new ones. Now, this next one, it was made in the 70s too. And this was a Barlow, they call it the Fancy Bolster. It's a Schrader, Schrader old timer. It's the USA 206 model. On these, they look like bone handle, but I think they're a Delrin, just by the way they feel. They've got the clip blade, and they've got the pin blade. Pretty little old knife. Now this one, it never was packed. You can tell by the way it looks. It's never been sharpened. It's never been threw around. It's just a good collecting knife. You still see a lot of these. You can get on eBay, you can find them. You can buy them anywhere, 25 on up to 40 bucks, depending on what you want to spend on one. But there's still plenty of them out there. Now this next knife, from Germany, the Boker Tree brand. It's like the case, it's been packed, it's been wallowed around, it's been sharpened a lot of times. You can look at the blade on this one and tell it's been sharpened a lot. Look how wore down she is. She'll still sharp enough though. She got the old carbon steel 1095 German carbon. I'll tell you what, you can't hardly beat one of these old knives right here. A lot of people, they like to collect the old Boker knives. You know, I don't have many of them. I just pick them up here and there. Sometimes I'll find them flea markets, yard sales, garage sales. Every now and then you'll run across one at auction. If you hold your mouth right, you can buy one pretty cheap. I don't think I'd give old $15 for this one. I can get my money back anytime I wanted it. Now this one right here. This one was made in the early 80s. It's a K-bar. You don't see a whole lot of K-bar knives. It never was packed. 
you can tell the blade's still polished, still shiny, ain't been ground on. It's got the clip point blade, it's got the pin blade, it's got the smooth bolsters on them, it's got bone handles, got brass liners, good knife, real good knife if you're just looking for something to pack. You can still find these. I don't think I paid over 20 bucks for this one, and it's never been packed. Oh, they good old knives. What makes a Barlow special to me, the blade is on one side, and I always love that big long bolster for some reason. It just looks like a bullet to me. Looks like you ought to be able to just stick it in your rifle and shoot something with it. You know, I guess everybody's got their own opinion on pocket knives. Some people like the trappers, which the trapper came out right after the Barlow, maybe 75, 80 years later. They two blades just like this, both blades open from one end. But I like the Barlow. The trapper's a little bit too big for me to pack around my pocket. I don't like a big bulky knife. These are big enough. They'll do the job. These wasn't made for skinning animals. They wasn't made for getting out here hunting. They wasn't made for protection. These were work knives. That's what they were designed for. Farmers carried them. They'd work on their fences with them. If they had to cut a sack open, they had the blade to do it with. They was just a good all-purpose knife. Now this next one. This one's bone handle. Now it says Barlow right there in the bolster. It's got brass liners in it. Same as the other ones. It's got the, the clip blade and the pin blade. Both open same end. This is a Camellius. Now I think they made these knives from 66 to 82, somewhere in there. That's what this one is. I don't know exactly what year it is, but that's when this design was made. And I think I bought this one for just a little nothing. I might have got this one at a yard sale for four or five dollars. Don't remember. But a Camellius knife made in New York City. You can't hardly beat them. They got good steel in them. They got nice handles, nice blades. They're just a good looking knife. Everybody said, well, they all look the same to me. Well, I mean, the Barlow's, they pretty much all on the same pattern. But to me, they good looking knives. Now, here's one right here. Now, this thing is war slick. You can't hardly even read what's on the bolster. It says King Cutter on it. The old blades, like the others, they've been sharpened to death. But they not broke. Still got a little snap to them. This knife was made in the 30s. You ain't gonna find many knives made in the 30s that was still in this good of shape. It may look wore out, but it's pretty good shape to be as old as it is. Now this knife. This is a El Cheapo. <laughs> it's got the old chrome steel in it. It's called the Ideal. These knives, they're American made too, but they were made and sold in hardware stores. They were sold cheap. I think back when you could get these in the hardware store, they were like $1.99. A lot of people bought them, kids bought them up. A lot of them got destroyed, trashed. The bolsters on them are just stamped out sheet metal, tin, whatever you want to call it. They just snap on. So a lot of these got destroyed. They get stepped on, the bolsters smash on them. You drop them, the bolsters fall off of them. But they were just a good old knife, cheap knife. A lot of kids packed them around. They were good to whittle with, good to sharp your pencil in school with. You may think nowadays you can't pack a knife in school, but when I was a kid, everybody packed a pocket knife. Wasn't no big deal. These right here, I've got two of these, one black and one white one. I'll just go over the black one here. This is a Bayes. 
Now they were a cheap knife too. I think Imperial made the bays, but they had a solid bolster on them. They're all engraved. They got like a wheat pattern or something like that on them, but they're plastic handles. They don't, they've got real thin brass bolsters on them, real thin. The blades, these blades ain't much. You go gouging in something, you'll break one of them off. But it's like the ideal. They were made cheap. They were made to sell cheap. And they were made that everybody could afford one. So that's the Bay's knife. American made. They said old knife. Now we're going to get to single blades. These are called the Granddaddy Barlows. This one here is a saber. It's got the bone handles on it. These knives. This one was made in Japan. They made saber knives all over the world, I reckon. You can get them from China. You can get them from England. You can get them from Ireland. You can get them from Germany. And they even made some USA ones. But the Japan steel was supposed to have been a lot better. Everybody says if you're going to buy a Sabre, buy a Japan. Now these, I think, were made in the early 60s. They're a good solid knife, good heavy knife. Now, sabre nowadays, people think, well, they just junk. This old knife made it this long. The old blade's still over there. It's got a good snap. It's a good, strong knife. Can't hardly beat them. Here's another saber. Now this one's a little bit newer. This one was probably made in the late 60s, early 70s. They changed the bolsters on them a little bit. They don't have Barlow and Saber wrote on the bolsters. I guess they done that to save a few dollars, a few cents, I guess, back in them days. But it's basically the same knife. It's made in Japan. It's the 29 series. Got the bone handles. Same steel, carbon steel. I think they use 1095 in these. Good old all-around packing work knife. Then we get into the cheaper ones. These are the Master Barlows. These are made by Colonial in the U.S. Now that looks like bone, but that's Delrin handles on them. They don't have anything special in them. I don't see any kind of brass liners. The bolsters on them are kind of thin. They sold a lot of these. They made them cheap to sell them cheap. I think in the 60s, early 60s, when you could buy one of these, 99 cents to $1.50. Everybody could afford to pack one. Then I've got a newer Master Barlow from the 70s. Now this knife hadn't been packed. Look at the blade, how slick it is. It's a little dirty before I handle it. But it's the same as the other. It's a Colonial, made in USA. They're in handles. They got the stamped out bolsters. It says Master Barlow. They still called the Granddaddy Barlow. And you can still buy a Granddaddy Barlow today. I saw in a store the other day, they had a Rough Rider, Granddaddy Barlow. And it looked like it was made a little heavier than this one. I don't know, but it's made in China. It's the only down draw about it. Well, these knives here is made in USA. But these are good little old knives. They're good little old collecting knives. You don't put a lot of money in them. You can spend a lot of money for a Barlow. I've seen some of them get up there a couple hundred bucks. You know, I'm not going to spend $200 for a Barlow pocket knife, even though they're my favorite knife. I love to collect them. I'll buy the cheap ones. I can buy these knives right here. All high dollar knives, if you find them yard sales, flea markets, or wherever, you can still buy them pretty cheap. They may not be the best looking knife in the world. They're a long ways from being mint, but it's still a good solid knife. They're all still one piece. They're not broke, smashed beat to death, 
still good looking old enough to put up. But that's my old vintage Barlow's I wanted to show you today. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me see some of the knives you got. Thanks for looking.